When we talk about Apple, the spotlight almost always falls on the iPhone, the MacBook Pro, or flashy products like the Vision Pro headset. But for years, one of the most underestimated machines in Apple's lineup has been the Mac Mini. It doesn't have the glamour of a laptop you can take to a cafe, and it doesn't carry the same cultural weight as the iMac with its iconic silhouette. Yet, the Mac Mini has quietly been the workhorse of Apple's desktop world. Small, affordable, flexible, and deceptively powerful. Now, with leaks and insider reports pointing toward a brand new generation powered by the Apple Silicon M5 family, this little machine might be about to steal the show. And here's the kicker. Early benchmark predictions suggest the M5 chips aren't just incremental. They're setting new standards for graphics performance that could completely reshape how professionals, gamers, and everyday users think about desktop Macs. So in today's breakdown, we're diving deep into everything we know so far about the M5 Mac Mini, from benchmark leaks, insider reports, design expectations, GPU performance, pricing strategies, and how it stacks against the M4 generation. We'll also explore why this release could make the Mac Mini the most strategic product in Apple's entire Mac lineup. This won't just be a spec rundown. We're going long form here. Digging into context, history, buying advice, and what it all means for the future of Apple hardware. Chapter 1. The Benchmark Leaks Numbers that shocked everyone leaks around Apple's Silicon Roadmap are always tricky. Benchmarks surface months before release, often on pre-production hardware, and sometimes they're just educated guesses by analysts. But when the A19 iPhone chip benchmark surfaced earlier this year, they offered a massive clue about the architecture that would also power the M5 Mac family. According to early predictions, here's how things stack up. M5 standard. Single core scores around 4,115, multi-core around 16,793, GPU score roughly 80,541.M5 Pro, multi-core performance up to 25,674, GPU score nearly 155,390 M5. Max. Multi-core score pushing 29,431. GPU breaking into insane territory with 264,560. To put that in perspective, the regular M5 already creeps close to the M1 Ultra in CPU power. The M5 Pro effectively matches the M4 Max, which is no small feat. And the M5 Max? That chip is set to become the fastest Apple Silicon ever shipped, overtaking even the mighty M3 Ultra. But the real story here isn't about CPU alone, it's about the GPU leap. Apple seems to be focusing much more on graphics horsepower this generation, and in a world where AI workloads, creative rendering, gaming, and machine learning tasks rely heavily on GPUs, that's a smart move. Chapter 2 Understanding the M5 lineup Apple doesn't release just one chip. It releases a family, base, pro, max, and sometimes ultra. Let's break it down. M5, the entry-level chip likely to power the Mac Mini, MacBook Air, and entry iMacs. Balanced performance for day-to-day -day users, DEM5 Pro. The middle ground, designed for heavier users, video editors, developers, musicians, and small studios. Perfect for higher-end Mac Mini and MacBook Pro models, M5 Max the Beast. Targeted at professionals needing workstation-class performance, 3D modeling, Hollywood-level editing, massive datasets, usually ships in the larger MacBook Pros and Mac Studio.M5 Ultra. While not confirmed, Apple often fuses two Max chips into an Ultra for extreme workloads. That could arrive later in a future Mac Studio or Mac Pro refresh. For the Mac Mini specifically, Reports suggest Apple is testing two versions, one with the M5 and one with the M5 Pro. That mirrors what they did last year with the M4 Mini. The exciting part? This could mean Apple is deliberately keeping the Mini as a serious option for professionals who don't want to pay for a Mac Studio. Chapter 3 Why GPU performance is the real story over the past few years. CPUs across the tech industry have plateaued a bit. Yes, performance improves, but the days of doubling speed every generation are long gone. GPUs, on the other hand, have become the real battleground. Why? Because modern workloads demand it. Video editing, 8K timelines, multi-layer color correction, and advanced VFX lean heavily on GPU power, 3D rendering and animation. Blender, Maya, Cinema 4D, all GPU intensive .ai and machine learning. Training and running models need massive parallel processing. Gaming. Even though Apple has lagged in mainstream gaming, 
Titles like Resident Evil and Death Stranding have already made their way to macOS thanks to Metal and Apple's game porting toolkit. A stronger GPU means Apple is finally building the hardware foundation for serious gaming on Mac. So when we see the M5 Max's GPU score blowing past the M3 Ultra, that's not just a small spec bump. That's Apple saying, we're ready for the next decade of creative and AI-driven computing. Chapter 4. The Mac Mini. Apple's Silent. Powerhouse the Mac Mini has always had a strange place in Apple's lineup. First introduced in 2005, it was marketed as the BYODKM machine. Bring your own display, keyboard, and mouse. It was a tiny, affordable entry point into the Mac ecosystem. For years, Apple barely updated it, and many thought the Mini was doomed. During the Intel years, it was neglected, going four years at a time without updates. Yet despite this, developers, small studios, and even data centers kept buying it. Why? Because the Mini was cheap, compact, and flexible. Then came Apple Silicon. Suddenly, the Mini wasn't just affordable, it was powerful. The M1 Mini shocked everyone by outperforming Intel iMacs and MacBook Pros at a fraction of the price. The M2 Pro Mini added serious horsepower, and the redesigned M4 Mini in 2024 introduced a new compact chassis, front-facing USB-C ports, and Thunderbolt 5 support on Pro models. The result? The Mac Mini is no longer just an entry-level toy. It's become the sleeper hit of Apple's desktop strategy. Chapter 5. Insider Reports and Rumors Insiders Like Marco Zivic recently uncovered device, identifiers in Apple's backend for two distinct Mac Mini models, running the M5 and M5 Pro. That all but confirms Apple is readying a two-model release, and here's the twist. Apple has a history of skipping chips. The Mini never got an M3 version. It jumped straight from M2 Pro to M4. That means the existence of an M5 identifier is actually significant. It confirms Apple isn't sidelining the Mini this time. Instead, it's making it the first Mac to debut with the M5 generation, possibly as early as October 2025. That timing is unusual. Apple typically gives each product a year or two between refreshes. But this could be a deliberate strategy. Use the Mini as a launchpad for each new generation of Silicon Chapter 6, M4 vs. M5, the value game. Let's be real. Not everyone watching this is going to rush out and buy the M5 Mini the day it launches. And honestly, that might be the smartest move. Why? Because the M4 Mini is still incredibly powerful. It introduced a brand new design, supports Thunderbolt 5, and is more than capable for coding, music production, 4K editing, and even some 8K workflows. But with the M5 looming, retailers are already dropping prices. The base M4 Mini, originally $599, has dipped to $499 in recent weeks. Once the M5 is official, expect those discounts to deepen. Plus, Apple's refurbished store will flood with M4 Minis at reduced rates. For most people, the smarter play may be to grab an M4 Mini at a bargain. You'll get 90% of the M5 experience for much less. The only users who should pay the premium are 3D, Professionals, 8K, video editors, AI, researchers, or anyone who just wants the absolute latest dot chapter 7, design. Expectations Apple isn't likely to redesign the Mini this year. Remember, it just got its first new chassis in 14 years in 2024. That's still fresh. Expect the same compact aluminum body, same front ports, and same quiet fan system. The story of the M5 Mini will be all under the hood. Chip upgrades, maybe small tweaks in thermal management, and potentially new wireless standards like Wi-Fi 7 or upgraded Bluetooth 6 point. Apple doesn't redesign products just for fun. It'll ride this new mini design for years, just like it did the 2010 chassis. Chapter 8. Beyond the Mini, Other M5 Max. The Mini isn't the only product getting M5 silicon. Reports suggest the iPad Pro will also be refreshed in late 2025 with the M5. It'll be a smaller update compared to the big OLED redesign of 2024, but the new chip will keep it competitive for professional workflows. Down the line, expect M5 Pro and Max chips to land in the MacBook Pro and Mac Studio in 2026, but for now, the Mac Mini is the first pioneer. Chapter 9. Buying Advice So here's the million-dollar question. Should you buy the M5 Mac Mini? If you're a professional who needs GPU horsepower, yes the M5 Pro Mini could save you from spending thousands on a Mac Studio. Chapter 10. Final thoughts. The upcoming M5 Mac Mini 
represents a shift in Apple's desktop strategy. By debuting its newest chips in the Mini, Apple is turning this once-overlooked box into a flagship showcase for its silicon advances. The CPU improvements will be nice, but the GPU leap is what will truly matter. For creative professionals, AI researchers, and even gamers, this could be the Mac Mini that finally makes the case for small form factor desktops. And for everyone else, the M4 Mini's falling prices make it one of the best value Macs ever released. Either way, the Mac Mini, Apple's silent powerhouse, just became the most interesting Mac to watch.